At first glance, this picture might just look like a photocopy of a man's face squashed up against a Xerox machine. But if you look closer, you'll see that all is not quite as it seems. In fact, this squash shot took hundreds of hours to complete using an absolutely astounding technique. What's that technique, you may ask? Well, keep watching to find out as today, I'm gonna be your curator through some of the most skillful and downright crazy art techniques I'll bet you've never seen before. Let's go. While drawing a simple dot on a page is something just about anyone can achieve, would you believe that this picture is comprised of a mind-boggling 3.2 million dots? The man behind this to-the-point project is Florida artist Miguel Endara. And trust me, this Florida man made headlines for only good reasons. The drawing entitled Hero is a portrait of Miguel's father with his face pressed against glass and took 210 hours of painstaking dot placement for Miguel to complete, armed with a single Sakura Pigma Micron pen with a nib of just 0.2 millimeters. While there's no doubt the picture must contain multiple millions of dots, Miguel admitted that he can only estimate how many there really are. The total number of dots was determined by multiplying his average dotting speed of 4.25 dots per second by the 210 hours logged on the piece, equaling 3,213,000. The technique Miguel uses to create his myriad of speckled creations is called stippling, and the level of photorealism he achieves is absolutely mind-blowing. Talk about pinpoint precision. While Miguel's tiny dots work together to form a bigger picture, our next alternative artist's single specks of craftsmanship speak for themselves. Created by English artist Dr. Willard Wigan, these minuscule models are some of the smallest sculptures ever created. Using a microscope, Willard created his own collection of miniature tools like this little pick and this tiny drill to carefully carve his sculptures out of materials ranging from splinters of wood to tiny clothing fibers and grains of sand. He even uses his own eyelashes as mounts for his minuscule art pieces and occasionally as paintbrushes too. Painting inside the eye of a needle. Not bad, eh? With work this delicate and precise, Willard has had to train his heart rate, breath, and movements to make sure he doesn't slip or break anything while crafting under these microscopic conditions. Incredibly, he even utilizes the tiny, automatic, unconscious movements of his hands that occur when his heart beats, almost like a pneumatic drill for driving his tools. And don't be fooled into thinking that the tiny stature of these sculptures makes for quick work, as Willard can work up to 16 hours a day for three to four months to complete just one sculpture. No small task indeed. In 2013, Wigan achieved his first Guinness World Record for carving a 24 karat gold motorcycle small enough to fit inside a single hair, plucked and hollowed out from his very neck. Then, four years later, Wigan went on to break his own record by carving a baby out of Kevlar and placing it inside a piece of his stubble. The sculpture is so small, it's roughly the same size as a blood cell and could fit inside an embryo. While it might seem odd to create art that can't be seen by the naked eye alone, given Willard's great big achievements in the art world, it's clearly the little things that count. While Willard uses eyelashes to create amazing art, our next creator is using them as a canvas. Marius Sperlick is a Berlin-based photographer who was the mastermind behind this eye-catching scene. Marius uses the human body, only lightly modified with false hair, makeup, and props for his art, producing amazing eyebrow curtains, lipstick painters, garbage mouths, and much more. But how about something a little more nail-biting? This amazing manicure was created by London-based nail artist Soph Builds Nails. Soph has been posting amazing nail art since 2020, showcasing shrunken everyday scenes and micro chunks of creativity. Largely using glue and acrylic nail gel hardened by UV light, she crafts intricate structures and assorted household items, creating some of the most astounding works of wearable art I've ever seen. Nailed it! 
But as far as eye-popping art is concerned, you're not going to believe the artist we've got up next. Now, clearly most artists like to experiment with how they make their art. Some people like to use millions of dots, others like to make complex structures, while others simply like to paint. This artist, on the other hand, likes to paint with his eyes. This is Leandro Granato, born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. From a young age, Granato realized there was something unusual about him because he had a special ability to utilize the connecting tube between his nose and eye, known as the nasolacrimal duct, to snort liquids up his nose and spray them out of his tear duct. Totally normal, right? He became focused on using his special skill and told his family he'd use it to start a career in art. They called him crazy, but he was determined to make it. That's when the practice Leandro named eye painting was born. Leandro's career quickly took off as he made appearances around the world as the first person to use such a technique. Why am I not surprised? His painting style, which utilizes perfectly safe paints made of vegetable-based dyes, generates plenty of interest, with this particular painting being sold for just under $5,000. I'm not totally convinced he didn't sneeze to paint the top left green, but anyhow... While his art is certainly unconventional, it's still able to fetch an impressive price, and I bet every time Granato visits home, he loves telling his family, I told you so, with a wink and a squirt of paint. Moving swiftly on, Italian Vincenzo Scarucci is another incredible artist who's taken his game to another level. Scarucci has a passion for carving everyday objects into intricate and detailed works of art. Mostly focusing on the carving of food, Scarucci uses a scalpel to make the precise incisions needed for his work. Considering guacamole exceeds my culinary skills, it totally blows my mind how anyone can get this much detail out of an avocado. But for someone who can design a puzzle from an apple or use a rotary tool to engrave a snake onto an egg, working with complex patterns and designs clearly comes naturally. From someone who goes out of their way to make food look like other things, here's someone who goes out of their way to make paper look like fruit. Anna Mason is an English artist who releases incredible step-by-step -step videos revealing the process of painting photorealistic watercolor paintings. Her strawberries are particularly incredible, and her guide videos reveal how the secret of that glossy shine is to start by using photographs, planning where the highlights will be, and leaving those zones paintless until the rest of the colors have been filled in and dried. At this point, a light gray wash is used to pull the color surrounding the highlights into a natural, ultra-realistic blend that replicates the real reflections perfectly. While many forms of art are examples of delicate precision, some of the best art of the past century has involved displays of brutal, crushing destruction. Meet Cesar Baldacini a French artist whose career spanned the mid to late 20th century and was considered one of France's leading sculptors. His early work consisted of mostly scrap metal welded together, but after visiting a scrap merchant in search of more metal to melt in the 1960s, he observed a hydraulic crusher being used. Baldacini was so inspired by the sheer mechanical strength on display that he immediately began mechanically crushing metal objects like cars and presenting the results as exhibitions, something which more classical sculpture enthusiasts found shocking and controversial. Baldacini's work eventually began to receive more acceptance and popularity among art critics and he continued working with crushed metal for the rest of his career. Outside of crushing cars, Baldacini would regularly crush a cabinet's worth of cutlery into peculiar cubes as well as unleashing his crushing fury upon soda and beer cans, chocolate milk tubes, and even cheese graters. It's pretty awesome to see solid metal objects get effortlessly warped into near-perfect shapes like this, but I gotta ask, what did all that metal ever do to you, Baldacini? No, I'm not questioning your authority, Cesar. I would never. Please don't throw me in the hydraulic crusher. No! God, no! Our next artist really took their creativity to the next level when they won an Emmy for their work. Oliver Lata, better known by his online alias Extraweg, is an insanely gifted and somewhat twisted German digital artist, CG animator, and video creator. Lada's content has taken the internet and wider media world by storm over the past few years with his truly strange yet insanely well-made animations going viral again and again. 
Lotta creates his peculiar pieces using a mixture of 3D animation software, including Houdini and Octane, where he is able to model realistically rendered physics and textures. He stated that he spends hours simply playing around with the tools in these programs, which allow him to pull off crazy stuff like taking a model of a person and giving them a gelatinous physical consistency, or taking it a step further and warping the model design itself, or even completely changing a character's physical composition by making the most of cutting-edge particle rendering effects, like you can see here. Wonderfully weird, right? While most of his pieces, which melt body horror with strangely innocent pastel colors, are little more than a few seconds long, they can take weeks to design, craft, and render. But thankfully, this high-effort talent hasn't gone unnoticed. Several big names from Ray-Ban to Adidas have commissioned Lada for his unique style, which led Lada to his biggest job designing the opening credits for Severance, a show released on Apple TV in 2022. The show's director and executive producer Ben Stiller reached out to Lana after seeing Extra Wegg's Instagram and what a great move it proved to be. Lana went on to create such an incredible intro title sequence that his work won the show an Emmy for it in 2022. Now I could sit and watch Lana's uncomfortably mesmerizing work all day, but we've got more amazing artists to check out. Come on. While Lana uses the digital world to translate his surrealist dreams, Daniel Serva uses his camera. Daniel is a Venezuelan photographer with a serious Photoshop talent. While Serva's work is often surrealist, it works so well because of the focus he places on realism by ensuring he goes out of his way to capture all the elements perfectly using his camera before the editing begins. Whether it's props, location, or subject, Serva wants the raw photographic elements to be coordinated to his overall vision before he bends them to his will. This ensures lighting, textures, and angles are always perfect, meaning that when he unholsters Photoshop's warp tool and starts melting faces and tongues, everything looks real enough to give the viewer nightmares for weeks. Thanks, Daniel. Another talented individual with a penchant for manipulating the real world is Payjack, a painter and street artist hailing from Spain. Payjack's art ranges from the humorous to the deadly serious, focusing on themes of social issues, the effects of environmental destruction, and humanity's place in the world. With pieces like these reminding us of how ant-like us humans really are on the grand cosmic scale of things. What makes Payjack's art so remarkable is the way it seems to spring up in urban spaces almost spontaneously. Like this piece where he keyed a Van Gogh painting into the hood of a Jaguar which I assume he had permission to do. These pieces, meanwhile, are scraped into the paint of old walls found in a refugee camp in Jordan, carrying a hopeful human message that blends into its surroundings so well you could easily miss it. His skill at working with his surroundings, merging his work with its environment, highlights a rare ability to see art in the mundane, like these strips of light refracted by glass, and trying to tap into that ability is something that could make all of our lives more interesting. I mean, even his paint palette is brought to life here with the addition of some shark fins. Payjack has been all around the world leaving artistic gifts for those lucky enough to notice them, including these gravity-defying wire-mounted shoes seen in East London in 2016. So keep your eyes peeled. You might just be lucky enough to notice one of his incredible pieces the next time you take a city stroll. Similarly, another artist, Yosuke Amamiya, warps the real world in mind-bending ways by turning his attention to apples. Dang, Yosuke, I told you, you shouldn't have left your lunchbox in the nuclear reactor. Jokes aside, Amamiya decided to start working with apples as he realized that an apple's color, pattern, and shape change depending on where they're from and how they're grown. So naturally, he took that idea to the absolute extreme. Now, somewhat disappointingly, Yosuke's apples aren't actually melting, nor are they edible. They're meticulously handcrafted. Amamiya largely crafts his fruits from wood using relatively simple whittling knives, and once he has a melted apple he's happy with, he paints as many as 36 base coats of white paint to start building the smooth, rounded look of the skin. Once the base coats dry, Amamiya paints the apples in astounding color detail, and the results speak for themselves. And if you prefer your apples non-melted, don't worry, he can do that too. So well, in fact, it's easy to forget they're wooden. 
When Amomia isn't making apples, he's focused on the rest of the fruit bowl, making surreal paint-splashed pears, plums, and persimmons, and ultra-realistic bananas that, while they don't present any risk from slipping on their skin, do present a dental hazard to anyone who tries to take a bite. But what's a couple of lost teeth in the name of great art, am I right? From astounding sculptures made from one piece to sculptures made from many pieces now, Gil Bruvel is an Australia-born artist with a remarkable talent for faces. His mask-like pieces are made using hundreds of wooden sticks meticulously measured and organized to create glitchy textured faces. Can you imagine how long that must have taken to plan and assemble? Gil's pieces contain lots of intentional gaps and negative space to give them that unique texture, making it feel like you're beholding some kind of glitch in the matrix of reality. His works come in all different colors and head-twisting styles that are guaranteed to leave you checking to make sure your own cranium is still intact. Now, speaking of crazy heads, I'll do you one better. This. A crazy head with face, neck, shoulders, and arms to match. While at first glance, you might be fooled into thinking this looks like something straight out of an AI image generator, shockingly, it's very real. Realized by Johannesburg-born artist Daniel Popper, this gargantuan statue was constructed out of steel, fiberglass-reinforced concrete, wood, and other natural fibers in 2019 to be used as the backdrop for Croatia's Modem Festival of Art and Music. Popper's remarkable works have been displayed at a whole range of festivals and venues. Most impressive, at Afrika Burn 2013, Popper delivered this wooden colossus titled Reflections. After transforming the piece by blasting different lighting out through its chest, the piece was ultimately intentionally doused in flames while festival goers danced and looked on in awe, and a little sadness as the incredible temporary piece met its scheduled demise. While Popper's work celebrates life using giants, expert sculptor Sheila Morofka, by contrast, focuses on creating teeny tiny replica newborn babies. In fact, it turns out there's a whole community of artists who slightly strangely create incredible lifelike miniature babies. I don't know about you, but there's something a little bit off-putting with just how real these babies look. The babies, which are crafted from polymer clay, are finished with silicone paints, glass eyes, and mohair, a yarn taken from Angora goats. While the niche is still in its infancy, I'm confident that these cute, albeit slightly uncanny babies will grow up to be big and strong. After all, they're being sold for roughly $500 each, which can go straight into their college funds. As you've seen, the miniature clay ornament market is a pretty interesting scene. But you ain't seen nothing yet. Luca Van Dort is another clay sculptor who makes incredibly horrifying and odd miniature sculptures. Now granted, the London-based artist does make slightly more wholesome sculptures too, like the character TikTok from The Return of Oz and this Pokemon oddish. However, the majority of his work involves sculptures like this face that makes me squirm just looking at it. But hey, if you actually like that kind of stuff, you could display it alongside these, giving the impression that these baby-faced worms ate their way through Van Dort's pockmarked clay face. Let's all thank Colorado-based artist Joy Bergeron for these nuggets of nightmare fuel. Bergeron crafts these worm babies from polymer clay and acrylic, and despite Joy referring to them as nuggies, I'll let you decide whether they fall into the cute category. Moving on, Robert Wexler is a Californian artist with a flair for mischief. A self-described trickster, this nutty creative has a tendency to take everyday objects and bend them into a state of madness. When he was a student, he made this ring of shopping carts in a Costco parking lot that, well, took the shop assistants a long time to clear up. The work paid off as it was later referenced in an official Costco book, Every Artist's Big Dream. But Wexler's work only got crazier as the years went on. Here, he welded nine bikes together, creating a bike ride that's impossible to escape from. He also dabbles in necromancy. On two separate occasions, he took a dead taxidermized parakeet, added a motorized propeller to its face, then attached a banner saying, falling in love again, then let it fly infinitely in circles hanging from the ceiling. That's pretty dark, Wexler. He continued his dark streak by creating this series of musical slaves. When each mouse runs on its wheel, it turns a music box, giving its running purpose and providing its owner with the soothing tones of captivity. Let me know in the comments what you think these crazy pieces mean, because I'm beat. Even so, all of these were only his warm-up. Wexler quickly turned his sights towards cash. Cold, hard cash. 
His idea? To help us look at pennies, something we might consider almost valueless, from a different perspective. Wexler takes change and creates remarkable patterned lattice structures by cutting, pressing, and welding. In this piece, Wexler created three huge coin cubes and, with the largest being 17 by 17 by 17 pennies in volume, I estimate that artwork to be worth about $49.13. Now, typically, it's illegal to alter or deface official government currency, but Wexler claims that it only applies if there's intent to use the money fraudulently. As far as he's concerned, art gets a free pass, and I hope he's right. Otherwise, his legal fees could be up in the dozens of dollars. Dozens, I say! Up next, we have French artist Valentin Pavageau. With stylized imagery and minimalistic colors, Pavageau offers striking visuals by recycling visual multimedia assets from sources ranging from old paintings to frames of old movies. Pavageau will find and cut out his subjects and then add them to a digital collage before adding peculiar backgrounds and color gradings that provide a real dreamlike quality. Some of the French artist's work features mesmerizing black and white pattern images which befuddle our brains due to the fact that patterns of such intense contrast don't really occur in nature. As our brains haven't evolved to process the unnatural visual information, these patterns can appear almost as illusions, adding perplexing depth, motion, and general visual weirdness, which makes the already surreal subject matter feel even trippier. If Pavageau's work tickles your brain just right, you can pick up prints of his art via his website. How many professional sandcastle makers does it take to make the tallest sandcastle in the world? No, that isn't the setup to a poor joke. It's the question Dutchman Wilfred Steger asked himself before tracking down 30 of the world's best sand sculptors to assist him in building the world's tallest sandcastle. While creating miniature sandcastles is a super achievement in its own right, they pale in significance when cast against the Mega Sand Citadel Steger & Co. created in 2021. Standing at 70 feet high with 5,357 tons of sand making up its incredibly detailed body, this beast took home the world record for the world's tallest sandcastle. At the peak of the Citadel stands a reminder of a dark time for humanity a depiction of COVID-19 wearing a crown. Steger said that he wanted the structure to represent COVID's power over the world in 2020, and I'd say he captured it pretty well. The intimidating structure was 10 parts sand to one part clay, which allows for a firmer mixture that can be stacked higher than regular sand, and with the help of some initial scaffolding, it was built up layer by layer before being super carefully etched with the detailing. The whole thing was covered in a layer of sand glue consisting of sand with added polymers that bind with water, forming a cement-like coating, which kept it standing strong for several months. With the level of detail on that sand fortress, it can be hard to know where to look first. But if you try to be more like this sculpture by Yoshitoshi Kanemaki, you can look at all of it at once. Yoshitoshi's trippy wood carvings are like looking at a glitched out time-lapse photo showing a scene in motion grafted onto a single sculpted form. These sculptures were designed to represent the conflicted feelings we humans experience which can often consist of more than one at a time. While each sculpture displays a whole array of expressions, they start as an emotionless hunk of wood. Yoshitoshi then peels off the bark, etches on his design based on a previously made scale miniature, and then he chisels away, carving and painting until his vision is realized. It's as easy as one, two, three. And voila, a girl with 12 faces. Man, with a dozen mouths, she must spend a ton on toothpaste. And that concludes our artistic voyage for today. Which of these amazing artworks impressed you the most? Let me know down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.